This is the Longer Ray 5 10 watt laser. And in this first impressions video, I'll be going over the setup, build quality, testing a few different materials, and my software recommendations. Setting up this machine was pretty easy. If you're like me and have experience with 3D printers, assembling this laser is similar to those. However, if you haven't assembled any printers, the instructions are good, and there are other detailed assembly videos on YouTube if you need any help. Speaking of 3D printers, let's quickly compare the pricing of these two similar hobbies. On the low end of 3D printing, you can pick up an Ender 3 for about 230 bucks, or you can get the newer and faster Bamboo P1P, which is about 700. I recently made a first impressions on that machine, and I'll link that right below the like button. Or you can spend even more and get something like an X1C, Prusa XL, or Lulzbot. Laser engravers are pretty similarly priced. Longer makes three levels of laser, a 5 watt, which is less powerful than the one in this video, and that's about $300 on Amazon. The 10 watt is about $500 on Amazon, and the more powerful 20 watt is a bit pricier at $899, but these diode lasers are still much less than the next class of lasers like CO2 ones from Glowforge and Omtech. A very popular way to set up your laser is on top of a honeycomb bed, but for now, I'm gonna stick with an MDF table that will be a cheap and stable work surface. I cut the MDF to 24 by 30 inches, and it's a good size for the laser to sit on. I'll probably be moving the laser around a lot since I just placed it on sawhorses in my garage. So I 3D printed these brackets to anchor it in place. If you're interested in the files for these brackets or want me to print you some, comment below and we can figure something out. Another benefit to these brackets is the height adjustment. I designed these slots in the brackets so the laser can be raised and lowered to accommodate thicker or thinner materials. The build quality of this laser is pretty good. This is the first hobby laser I've used and the rails squared up nicely and everything rolls good once set up. My one complaint is these tiny screws that are used to square up the laser when adjusting the height. I don't think they sent me the wrong size based on some other videos I've watched, but I just couldn't get them to grab the threads. So I bought some slightly longer ones at Menards and it works good enough. A nice feature with this laser is the touchscreen. You can easily navigate between the menus, but I've been running the machine via USB cable, so I haven't used it that much. The software I'm using is Lightburn. A free alternative is Laser GRBL, but I couldn't really grasp the workflow. Lightburn has a free trial and is only $60 for a perpetual license. After launching Lightburn, the first thing you're going to do is create a profile for the laser. Click Devices, Create Manually, then use a standard GRBL laser profile and rename it and define the boundaries like this. Before doing any other tests or engravings, move the laser to the home position. And let's do a quick test. I just wrote test using the text tool, and now I'll make sure I place the piece in the right spot using frame. Once it's in the right spot, you can hit start. Since the test came out good, I'm going to create a grid on the new spoil board. I just drew a bunch of squares and centered them on the 400 by 400 grid in Lightburn. One of my favorite tools so far is the preview function that will show you exactly how the laser will move during the engraving. Make sure the laser is properly adjusted using the spacer block and retighten the adjustment screws. After checking everything with a frame, I hit start. This grid has really helped setting up work pieces in the upcoming tests. Another additional feature I should mention is the air assist. To add this accessory, you will need to remove this part and add this silver tip, but it was really easy to do, and the benefits of an air assist include dissipating some of the heat from the laser, removing some debris from the workpiece, and reducing the flame risk. Now let's test out a few of the most popular laser engraving materials. 
like wood, MDF, cardboard, leather, slate, and anodized aluminum. The main thing I've learned so far is that the main setting to change is the speed. And if you want a deeper cut, decrease the speed or increase the number of passes. I've been leaving the power at 100. And if you want a shallower cut, then increase the speed. And if you want a deeper cut, decrease the speed or increase the number of passes. When switching materials, always do a few tests with different settings. I've been pretty surprised by which materials I need to slow down or I can speed up and still get good results. On the first run with this cardboard, I used the same settings as I did with the plywood, but when I upped it to three passes, it turned out a lot nicer. And to cut through this cardboard, I did five passes at 50 millimeters a second at 100% power. For this thicker cardboard, I did slow it down, but it still wasn't enough to get through on the first try. On the second run, I did 7 passes and I slowed it down to 30 millimeters a second, but it still didn't punch through cleanly on every single number. So I think I would do another pass or two to get all the way through. Importing an image does slightly change the way Lightburn operates, but I sped it back up to only burn the top layer. This image was only one pass to 100 millimeters a second and 100% power. When burning images, one of the most important fields to change is the interval. For more detailed images, lower the number, but that will also increase the time. There's tons of other settings you can play around with to get better images, but the material does make a big impact. Going from pine to MDF, was an easy way to get a higher quality looking image. For these aluminum business cards, I took the dimensions of it, then drew that rectangle in Lightburn. Now I could more accurately place drawings or text within the area. The text on these business cards was the first time I used the fill command in Lightburn, and they came out really good. The air assist did slightly help move some of the dust out of the way, but wiping it with a paper towel cleaned them up nicely. The image I did on this card is a sketch of my logo, and I think it looks really cool. I only did a few tests on these leather patches, but I had to increase the speed quite a bit to not burn too deep. The last material I tested are these slate coaster blanks, and these burn really nicely. Burning text is really easy to do from Lightburn, but if you want to do images, I suggest using another imaging processing software called ImageR.com. ImageR just does some pre-processing of the image to optimize it for the material of your choice. Then you can download the image and import it into Lightburn. The last thing I want to address is safety. The laser diode alone is dangerous to your eyes. That's why you should always wear the correct eye protection. The glasses should block all the blue light from the laser. And sadly, it doesn't seem like the included ones do that as well as the third party ones I got on Amazon. So I'll link these better ones in the description. Also, depending on what you were engraving and cutting, there can be a lot of fumes or small particles in the air. That's why enclosures are really popular. But if you're like me and don't have the space for that yet, I'd recommend a large fan and operating the laser in a well-ventilated area like an open garage. Overall, I'm impressed with this laser. The projects I've done so far have come out great and I can't wait to do more tests in the future. Thanks for watching this first impressions video. If you have recommendations for future tests, comment below. I'll have links in the description for everything I've featured in this video and make sure to hit like, subscribe, and hit the bell icon for more content. See you in the next one.